possible. Um, I have a bachelor's in environmental science. I then went on to do a master's in climate change and development. Um, I recently left my job last year to pursue music full time and I'm currently a rapper. My take on the healthcare system in Zimbabwe, it's, it's in shambles. It's, it's heartbreaking to see because, you know, there's so much potential in this country and to just watch the slow, sort of slow burn into descent of the system here is, is terrible. I think we all have personal situations where we've had family members get sick and not get the care they should the care that they deserve, either because we're struggling to raise money, which I had a situation like that recently in a fam with a family member. And then once you raise the money, the actual quality of care is also another issue. And so it's, you know, I just can't wait for the time where we get back to a, a situation where Zimbabweans get what they deserve. They deserve more. As a young person, I feel like my voice is not really being heard by the older generation, by the people in power. I feel like we are talking amongst each other on social media and these platforms and all these different things like what we're doing right now. We are having a conversation about some of the issues we have, but I don't feel like old people are listening. Either they're too bogged down with so many different issues or they, you know, their priorities are misplaced and they're you know, trying to sort of consolidate their power and they're worried about different things. My take on corruption is that you know, a lot of countries have corruption. For me, the problem in Zimbabwe is the nature of the corruption. The corruption gets in the way of people getting on with their lives. I know of other countries in Africa, for example, that have corruption, but it doesn't interfere with the economy. It doesn't interfere, it's sort of integrated into the economy. They make sure the basics are there, or at least some sort of semblance of the basics are there. And people who have good ideas, people who have business ideas, people who want to flourish, still get to, you know, sort of build their businesses and have some sort of level of success. And yes, there are still many challenges throughout African countries but for me the corruption in Zimbabwe is particularly unique because it interferes with the economy because it's too intertwined with the economy those things should be separate from each other and people with good ideas should flourish the system should basically reward good behavior the problem we have right now is rewarding bad behavior we have bad role models as people that you know have sort of done things that are you know, we're not sure about in terms of how they got their money and what they're doing with some of these deals. In terms of where the problem is in Zim, I honestly don't know. It's just so many things going on in this country. I don't know where to, to pinpoint it and where to even start because on the one hand, there are policies that need to improve. But then on the other, there needs to be some sort of enforcement and adherence to that policy. Because what you have happening right now is for so many years, the government has been corrupt, but now it's sort of bled into the population. And so you have two problems you now have to deal with. You have to deal with, you know, the policies, but you then have to deal with adherence to law and the culture respecting that. And so I honestly don't know where to start. In terms of expressing myself and the freedom to do that in this country, in 2020, I think we have made some improvements. You know, if you think about a few years ago, there are things I wouldn't tweet, and I think a lot of people can say that. There are things that people wouldn't tweet when RG was in power. I think there's progress in terms of, you know, people's freedom to say things, but it hasn't reached the point that I wanted to. We are not able to, to fully go there and, and name names and talk about people freely without the fear of persecution, especially if you become a person of influence, because we've seen it happen. We've seen people get taken down once they get to a point where everyone is rallying around them and they're made an example of and so there's limitations to that freedom but you know i hope we get there there's so much police brutality here that you know there's situations where where it's so obvious that the person was just innocently minding their own business so you know even moments like now when there's covid and there's a curfew and people are just trying to get home and then there's no transport and then they come across all these issues you know the problem with the country they then get into situations where you know the police are abusing them and it primarily happens to people that are lower income and so I think we need to have a discussion about the class divide in this country and have an honest, you know, try and figure out how to raise their voices because I cannot speak for them. I can only sympathize and say, you know, we need to do better. I have so many hopes and aspirations for this country. You know, it gets me emotional because, you know, when you think of where Zim was and where it is now, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I, I just want to live in a place where people realize their full potential. Hard work pays off because what's happening right now is people who are hardworking and they can see the system is not working for them, they leave or they turn corrupt. And, and I, I can't really blame people for turning corrupt if that's the only system that incentivizes it. You know, when people are backed into a corner, 
you can only expect you know a certain type of behavior and so I really hope for a Zimbabwe where there are opportunities and the, we have the basics like water, electricity and good opportunities and the hard workers are rewarded. If I had a minute to talk to the president, <laughs> I'd need more than a minute. <laughs> but the first thing I would say is people are suffering and you need to see that because it does seem like either he doesn't care or he's really out of touch and both are worrying. And so the first thing I would say is you need to see what people are saying on Twitter. You need to go out there in the streets beyond what, you know, sort of your circle sort of trying to protect you from or shield you from. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, considering some of his recent statements, I would say that, you know, it seems that they're playing politics and there's, uh, you know, a factionalism going on and, you know, they're just playing politics and Zimbabweans, the ordinary Zimbabwean is collateral damage. And I would say you need to figure out how to pivot to worry about the people because the people aren't worried about your political games. At this point, it's about survival. People are struggling. They're trying to eat. They're trying to support their families. They're trying to have hope. People who are sick need just basic health care. And so for me, it's like, just try and get the basics right. Or at least don't get in the way of people who are fighting for those rights. Listen to the people.